All right, Miles, let's move on to the Seattle Seahawks. This is one of the more surprising teams in the league this year. Frankly, they surprised me. I didn't think they were going to be this good. Obviously, moving off of Russell Wilson, turning the keys over to Geno Smith. I didn't know really what to expect, but I didn't expect this. A Seahawks team that is deep in the playoff hunt, and they have an absolutely massive game right around the corner of the short term. Thursday night football to keep pace and stay in that playoff hunt. But that you've got a story out of Seattle that I think is going to be huge for the long term. Obviously, Seahawks fans are hoping for a big win this uh, this Thursday night and hopefully get into the playoffs. But you've got something that points to long term success for Seattle. But before I hand it over to you, Seahawks fans, you've got a storied franchise. There's no questions about it. Obviously, the Legion of Boom days, Jim Zorn, Steve Largent. You got so many great players and coaches throughout the years. But there are a few great Seahawks that aren't in the Hall of Fame that frankly should be. Give us one Seattle Seahawk that you think should be in right now but isn't let us know who that guy is in the comment section below but my give me uh give me the latest out of seattle yeah nick the seahawk who i would say shouldn't be in the hall of fame is definitely earl thomas i would say not earl thomas uh he had too too much uh tumultuation in the end of his career but nick there is great news for seattle on the horizon uh geno smith in seattle there are reports that both want to sign a long-term deal to keep him in Seattle for the foreseeable future. And that is sounding like a really good thing, Nick, uh, because he has accounted for 25 passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, 26 total touchdowns, and only eight interceptions with a league-leading 71.5 completion percentage. He has played lights out. Uh, You know, he was playing as one of the best QBs earlier this season. He's fallen a little bit, but he's still like top eight right now. He's been incredible, and quite frankly, it's his job to lose. And it's like the report is saying, Nick, the only issue they foresee with them getting a deal done is if another team comes in and offers Geno Smith even more money. So I think Geno Smith and Seattle coming together, wanting to get a long-term deal done is pretty huge news for Seattle. I know it's all but inevitable this was going to happen, but to hear the report that it's going to happen uh, sounds really good to me, Nick. Yeah, I agree 100%. One of those things, I had to go back and do the numbers because when I first heard this report you and I talked about, I was kind of like, well, Smith is 33. Do you really want to lock him up to a long-term deal? But I keep forgetting the guy hasn't played a whole lot of football for his age. He has 47 total career starts in the NFL. To put that in perspective, another quarterback that's about to sign a massive mega deal is Justin Herbert. He has 45 career starts, right? They're basically the same ter- terms of experience. Obviously, Smith is much older, but in terms of playing time, wear and tear on the body, I'm expecting Smith to be much closer to a Justin Herbert than, say, a Russell Wilson because he obviously hasn't played that much. So it makes sense. But to your point, Smith has been absolutely fantastic. You mentioned he leads the league in completion percentage. He's also uh, third in pass rating and fourth in my favorite stat, yards per passing attempt. I think that's the number that shows how efficient and productive a quarterback is on a per throw basis. And Smith has been as good as anybody. He's number four in the league. And this is a Seahawks team. I mentioned Justin Herbert. One of the reasons I brought it up is because this is a Seahawks team that actually is structured almost like they have a young quarterback on a rookie deal, right? Similar to like the uh, like the Chargers with Herbert or Josh Allen with the Bills or, or Mahomes with the Chiefs before that. Before they, you know, they get the guys, they get him, you know, 30, 40 games of experience. You know how good he is. Lock him up to a big long-term deal. That's exactly what we're seeing here, except Smith just got his, you know, experience of kind of a different way, right? He did it after 11 years as opposed to after years one and two. And that makes sense sense when you look at the Seahawks cap space right this is a team right now in 2023 that is fifth in the NFL according to over the cap with cap space they have 53 a little less than 54 million dollars of free cap space so they have more than enough money to lock up Geno Smith for the long term and we already know they have a great young core when you got that defense with Bryant and Woolen running back Kenneth Walker looks really good two bookend tackles so they've got a lot of young talent anyway so they don't have to spend a lot of money to bring in veterans I think it's a right move and a smart move to lock up Geno Smith right now yeah, Nick, and quite frankly, you know, they were on a good little tear there. Uh, they lost one to the Raiders, but that was a high-scoring game. The offense put up 34, so that looks good for them. They were able to beat the Rams. They lose to the Panthers, but honestly, Nick, the only reason they lost is because Kenneth Walker was out due to injury, and they couldn't really establish a running game. Their second-highest rusher was Geno Smith with 20 yards, and I think their running back homer only had a, a 20, 26 yards, something like that as well. So I think once they get their running back back, Uh, and able to establish the run a little bit more they would have been in that game but still quite frankly Nick he threw for three touchdowns uh he did throw the two picks but he he did have a really good game as well and he's been playing really well all season they have a tough tough stretch coming down the end of the season quite frankly one of the tougher ones in the NFL so I think this is gonna be good proving grounds for Smith going against the Niners uh Chiefs Jets and then finishing off against the Rams 
So uh, it, it'll be tough sledding, but I think that they have a good chance to put up a fight against all of these teams. And as you say, keep fighting for a playoff push to see what they can do. If he makes the playoffs, Nick, uh, there's no telling what kind of contract that Geno Smith could reel in from the Seahawks. Oh, of course. And remember, because they have all those draft picks from the Russell Wilson trade. So I talked about the young talent they already had. They're about to get a whole heck of a lot more of it in the draft over these next couple of years. So yeah, when I first heard this story, like I said, I was like, what are the Seahawks doing? And now that I thought about it for two seconds, I'm like, yeah, lock them up. The guy's playing great. You have more draft picks than God at this point coming down the pipeline. You're already a good young team. It just makes sense. And a really smart move by Pete Carroll and the Seahawks to get this deal done. And, and you know, we'll see how these last uh, last slate of games go. But I think irregardless, Geno Smith has showed enough that he deserves to be the franchise quarterback for this team.